Good afternoon, everyone. Lovely to have you here today. I'm Jackie Malloy, and this is the very first of our How We Are Changed conversation series. So I'm very excited to come to you today from Melbourne, which is a wonderful opportunity for us to acknowledge the country that we're on. I'm coming to you, as is Marnie, and our CEO, Rachel. We're all coming to you today from Wurundjeri people's land, the land of the Kulin Nation. And we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And we're very grateful for the enduring spirituality of our First Nations people and the love of land, of country, of water and the animals that live there. Thank you. So today we have How We Are Changed and our very special guest is Kim Thoday. And Kim has a pretty extraordinary legacy from which he speaks. More than 15 years as a serving chaplain in aged care, um, 10 years work as a chaplain in the South Australian Police and since 2007, 2008 and currently working with the Defence Force as a serving chaplain. Kim, thank you so much for being here for these really important conversations that we're going to have. Thank you very much. Really great to be here. Really, it's very exciting. And um, thank you for that, Jackie, that beautiful um, acknowledgement as well. And I would like to acknowledge the uh, Ghana people too, if I may from here in um, Adelaide, uh, the Adelaide Plains peoples um, acknowledge uh, our traditional owners here as well. Lovely. Today's first topic in this extended conversation about grief, loss and trauma is, I guess, kind of generally life, death and spirituality, which is a pretty big <laughs> umbrella to be talking under um but something you and I were talking about the other day and I've heard you say it a few times now um around the shattering of beliefs and I wonder if this is a good place for us to to start in terms of I guess the the bigness the grandness of the world that we're talking about yeah yeah thank you um it is a really great place to to start, I think, and um, it's one certainly one way um, to understand um, trauma, actually. And we could uh, we'll probably talk a bit more about trauma. Um, and um, you know, it, as a as a defence force chaplain, um, there is this um, um, psychological issue that is well known now for people um, who have served particularly in uh, um, on battlefields and in in warlike conditions uh, PTSD and that is um, a very um, it's a, a diagnosed um, kind of specialist field of um, of uh, very acute um, levels of trauma but there's uh, there's more more general kind of trauma as well and um, if we think about um, trauma I think actually from a particularly Jackie from a spiritual care point of view yeah um, and, and what spiritual care if, if spiritual care is trauma informed and I think um, the literature points to the fact that we need to be um, informed mm -hmm. about it because it's quite prevalent then um, uh, if we think about trauma as as being um, uh, part of the response to a traumatic, uh, a traumatic event that is um, life-altering, that is um, typically harmful and destabilising, then we're right smack back in, back um, bang into um, the um, the theory of uh, the shattered assumptions, the 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 um, shattering of a person's assumptive world and um you know uh, some, some of your listeners and viewers 
at the moment would be able to um, do some of their own research around that if they wish to, if they haven't already. Um, there's some really, really insightful um, studies that have been done now um, that show that, hey, this is, um, this is something that really happens to people who experience um, some form of a, uh, abuse, say, that um, uh, things like trust, um, uh, the things that they took for granted, about the maybe about the benevolence of the world, you know, um, all of a sudden uh, that stuff, that really deep, important stuff about belief and about values, is destabilized to the point of sometimes being broken, and that's that's the way I've um, seen that, uh, yeah. observed it many many times. But having having a bit of a handle on it theoretically helps with um, understanding what's going on for people. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because um, we know this if if we've gone through trauma or we know people uh, who have experienced trauma is that it doesn't matter if an individual knows this, knows this about the assumptive world. If it's shattered, you can't just think it back together again. You yeah. can't just decide, oh, no, that's not going to happen to me. And I think this is the extraordinary thing about grief and loss and trauma is that um, and I, I think I think p people really understand this about grief in particular, yeah. Yeah. that um, it's it, it happens for everybody in a way that's particular to them, that there is some things that are common um but that it finds you out it sort of finds all the places that you never wanted attention to be put on and yeah. and it goes there um and it brings things up and we can't not uh we can try and tamp it down but at some point it's going to happen whether we like it or not and mm -hmm. i think it's just one of those extraordinary things that we're such thinking animals you know, yeah. we can't outthink our way through um, mm -hmm. grief and loss and trauma. We have to experience it in our own way and obviously with help, depending on the severity of it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. And, um, yeah, th thanks for, you know, um, mentioning uh, the, the grief and loss um, part, of, part of this as well because the, 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 the two are often... Um, at work, there's an interplay. I, 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 of course, we know uh, that um, with with grief and loss, trauma is not necessarily involved, but it often is. Um, with trauma, grief and loss is not necessarily involved, but often it is. <laughs> um, one of the ways to kind of think about the the, the difference between you know grief. And trauma is that grief usually, um, uh, I'll put it this way, grief often, grief often is somewhat um, uh, we anticipate. So, so we talk about anticipatory grief, mm. you know. So we, uh, yeah, as, as we go along in life, we kind of learn, don't we, in all sorts of ways, the realities of things like death and so on. And to some to some degree, we can be a little bit prepared for cert for certain losses, like leaving home. You know, um, uh, writers have talked about it, going right back to when we're babies and feeling and, and somehow or other having to come to terms as an infant that um, mm. uh, our mothers, in particular, um, are not able to have that really you know, very, very physical, intimate um, kind of um, breastfeeding relationship forever that, that you know, that, that and, and there's, yeah. there's, there's a, there's actually a loss there that we experience. So um, gr grief come, it's interesting to think about grief that way. Trauma, not always, but usually it's, it's, it's more abrupt. It's more unexpected. It's, it's often, um, something that we we ha can't anticipate, 
and that and that's part of the the shock value mm-hmm. of it and um the uh you know that the, the that shattering of what we thought was you know what what we had assumed to be true about the world or about our lives or about our our religion or our faith um about our philosophy and all of a sudden we go that just doesn't make sense anymore um i'm mm-hmm. I, i'm suddenly lost i'm I don't, I don't know what I believe anymore. Um, I don't know if I can trust the people that I thought I could trust, yeah. the people that I'd expected that I would be able, the institutions that I thought I would be able to trust. Mm-hmm. And that's some of the... So you see how the, there is interplay between the two. Obviously, that involves a whole lot of grief, and yet we need to see them as, you know, they are distinctive Grief and loss and trauma, they, they, they occupy the same sphere, but they um, are, are useful ways of, of seeing different things that are happening to the people yeah. that we are, we are caring for and, indeed, what's going on inside of us. Yeah, ourselves. Ourselves, yeah. Uh, we did um, a conversation series last year which was about transitions and it's just making me realise, you know, you're throwing the light up on that, that some of the loss that we experience are transitional. We get time to get our head around them. We get um, an opportunity to kind of walk slowly towards it and out of it. Um, yeah. And I hadn't really thought of the word itself of shatter Um, Because we've talked about it quite a few times, this shattering of belief, but actually the word itself really does give you the impression of something immediate and sudden, and Mm. then it's just a mass of pieces. That doesn't happen slowly. That isn't a transition. That is a sudden act. Um, Wow. That's, yeah, that's going to really stick with me now, just that sense of how time plays out. Let me ask you this, what you think, because uh, for some of the people who are on the call with us today, they'll know about Connect2, but I I just would like to um, introduce (laughs) Connect2 for those for whom it might be new. And Connect2 is a framework that helps us understand spirituality, spirituality that doesn't need to be religious, that that religion and faith is one part of spirituality. So... Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Connect2, imagine a circle and that circ- circle is yourself and then there are five circles around it and these are the ways that you connect in your life and these connections are how you express spirituality. So in one of the five circles, we would have connection with self. So that's self to self, you know, like meditation, reflection, One of the circles is connection to others. One will be creativity. One is nature. And one is something bigger than ourselves, which could include, of course, religion and faith. And so if we think about spirituality, because I'm just sort of thinking back to, you know, our umbrella, life, death, spirituality. And... If we think about our spirituality as these connections, grief and loss, but particularly trauma, I imagine we're disconnected and we're disconnected in ways that we might not even be aware of. Um, So the image that comes to my mind is the person that can't, see the shades of green in a garden or the definition of leaves or the different types of birds because life has become so depressed, so grey, so without life. It's just survival that those wonders, for example, may no longer be something that they can see or gain pleasure from. And so I'm wondering what you think about this, Kim. Is, it, is this sort of a helpful thing to sort of think about it as connection and disconnection? Oh, very much so. And the whole, 
it, you know, fits fits perfectly, doesn't it, with what we've just talked about previously with, um, you know, some kind of undermining uh, that perhaps has has taken place. Um, you know, let's 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 think for a moment um, uh, about uh, the the kind of uh, how, in a practical way, I guess trauma is, um, um, you know, what what is symptomatic, kind of often, um, in a practical sense about trauma. You know, it it often it often involves. Uh, things like natural disasters, you know, responses, experiences mm. to natural disasters, accidents, crime, um, domestic violence. Um, you know, it's it's very topical at the moment, isn't it, in our world? With mm. um, when when we see still explicit um, community um, examples um, of, of of terrorism, stroke, um, racism, um, we 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 see that. Uh, um, all, all sorts of um, discriminations, uh, people still experiencing those um, deeply um, hurtful and disruptive, uh, quite quite violent um, attacks that may not be physical, but um, do an enormous amount of moral injury, to use another um, theory that's um, maybe for another time, um, mm. but um, that, that is... Uh, that is part of what's what's happening is it's it's an injury uh, to to a person's uh, deepest sense of identity and worth and value. Um, you know that's that's they they are great definitions, aren't they, of what morality yeah. morality and um, yeah a, a, a person's uh, um, deepest sense of worth and identity is all about. So I think. Yeah, when when we see these um, these disconnections um, is, is is a is a word that you're using. And then um, the, the 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 tool that I've used a lot, <laughs> many many times, um, I've um, introduced that tool as in my work for Meaningful Aging Australia um, over the years. But but I use it for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I use I use connect to, uh, connect to as a spiritual tool for how I'm tracking Jackie, as well yeah. as yeah. many, many people um, uh, uh, that, that I have been invited to, um, you know, into their, into their um, liminal space, in, in, into, into their sacred space uh, to journey along with. Uh, many of these are our wonderful, beautiful um, seniors who um, have very often experienced profound disenfranchisement actually yeah. Yeah. so there's another word um, yeah. a, a very useful word and and there's another theory about grief um, many are you know this has been well documented now that um, despite all of the best intentions of um, uh, moving away from the language of a nursing home to um, you know trying to replicate some kind of home-like conditions in residential care and so on yeah. um, d despite all of the best of intentions still we are seeing from royal commissions and other mm. other things uh, that there is a um, the lived experience by many seniors still of a deep um, disenfranchised um, grief actually which means that no one's listening no one's um, Mm. No one much is is actually listening to the cries for, uh, um, you know, there is grief um, that I'm experiencing. There is trauma that I'm experiencing in this um, so-called transition into aged care. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, the Connect2 tool is a useful way, I think, of um, delivering. Um, it's a helpful way of delivering spirit um, trauma, grief-informed care. Uh, yeah. it, 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 it's useful for um, care planning, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I, I, I just find it, a, um, for me, a personal, a useful personal way of, um, you know, keeping a bit of a record of um, my, my interactions with... Mm. The, the person in aged care, for instance. 
Because um, something that yeah, will just, change, it won't. It. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It, it it uh it grow. I mean, our spirituality grows with us, uh, yeah. changes with us. It uh, does. Depending on our yeah. our circumstances, I think one of the things that I was thinking when you were just talking about disenfranchised grief is um how I know when I was younger. I really did honestly think that uh, older people didn't get sad as much because yes. they'd be so yeah. used to it by then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think there is still a, a sense of be, becoming used to losing people, becoming yeah. used to having to say goodbye and yeah. having friends die. Now that I'm 60, I sort of think, how on earth could you ever get used to your friends dying? That makes no sense to me at all. If anything, I would expect the opposite to be true. Um, we... I'll, 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 I'll never forget, Jackie, uh, there's mm -hmm. many things that come to mind. I don't know why this has just sprung to my mind very quickly, but can I just say that I'll never forget a few years ago, um, a dear, dear, dear lady, um, uh, 80, 85, 86 years of age, I uh, was, uh, I, I can think of her so well because it was in the days when um, not everyone in residential care was, was uh, high dependency. Some of you, some of your people here today would uh, remember when there were people around who were quite low dependency actually she was one of those she'd she'd been in residential care probably for nearly 20 years I mean that's not well, doesn't happen doesn't happen doesn't often happen these it. days but I'll never forget the moment and and it was simply because well it's not so simple really but it was because there was just the right environment on this particular day when she just with me let out a bombshell for the first time for the first time she openly told the story it's typical isn't it about the need to tell your story oh, that yeah. she'd never been able to tell anyone about her first born that was still born and how back in the day as a young woman she was all she was embarrassed really still it's married and she she broke down sobbing it it makes me feel like sobbing now that she mm. she buried this stillborn down in the chook shed down underneath the where the chooks were kept and she buried it in the ground and she's been living with that grief and that guilt all of these years. <laughs> and um, we did a whole lot of really beautiful things. It took a while with that. But, you know, um, the power was there. It was, it was you know, it, it was so wonderful because here was um, uh, still a very, um, you know, f at, at, at this level, a very fragile person but 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 the resilience of this lady still you know and it was great to be able to celebrate those things and to kind of gradually little by little just together and with a couple of other trusted people in the end help her to retell that story mm. in some um in, in some better um mm -hmm. more uh, right. more up um mm. yeah just more more whole ways, ways that she restorative, I guess would be the yeah. word. Um, I would use. Restorative is a beautiful word to you. I'm so glad she. Had um. It. Anyway, I mean, there's lots. Um, others would have these stories, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. yeah, so that's what. Thank you. You just sparked that thought when you said that that uh, you know these old older folk, our seniors. Oh, you know they, yeah, they're they're hardened to it all now. They're they're over all of that. Then, no, no, <laughs> no, and I mean it does sort of make you, like you said, like our stories need to come out. They need to be heard, 
even if it's just by ourselves, you know, um, conversation is something we can have with ourselves as much as with someone else. Um, and we never know what our own interactions with other people, what conditions they create for the good and the bad, for the shame and also, as you experience, Kim, for someone to feel like this is the time, this is the mm. time I have to tell it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, if there is uh, the spiritual care component, well, one could argue with trauma that the only care is spiritual care. Mm. Um, regardless of who is providing it, there's probably very few psychiatrists that would um, kind of characterise what they do as spiritual care. But um, actually in terms of creating meaning and connection, mm. that's that's what it is, isn't it, really? Yeah, I have a definition. Uh, I'll throw it in quick. I hadn't intended to do this, but... Um... My definition, this is this is a Kim definition of a spiritual care. Yeah. Uh, is that um, it is a it is a care that addresses um, the sphere of a person's ultimate concerns. Period. It's taken me um, a lifetime to try to. Yeah say something in my own words that is distinctive from all the other kinds of care and you've reminded me about this can you repeat uh, it Kim? so yeah so my definition and in fact it's my definition of spirituality actually is that spirituality mm. is the sphere the sphere of our ultimate concerns that's what it is I'm not saying it's what it's only. Spirituality is many things. We know that it's it's mm -hmm. kind of a mm -hmm. bit hard to define, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, um, pe people have been writing PhDs and things for quite a while now um, on this subject. But um, I'm borrowing a term from one of, um, uh, so I'll give credit to this, uh, from Paul Tillich, by the way, one of the greatest, uh, in my view, one of the most important philosophers of the 20th century, who was a... Um, um, he was a refugee of Nazi Germany, so there's quite a story there. But his mm. notion um, of ultimate concerns, I'm borrowing his idea, his yeah. philosophy, but I'm applying it. I'm applying it in my way. And um, it is the spiritual care for me is um, addressing, I'll say it again, is addressing a person's um, sphere of ultimate concerns and those that that I, I like it in all sorts of ways because um, it gets us to think about well what are our ultimate concerns what are our not non-negotiables yeah. in in a way what 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 in essence is your world view um, speaking about assumptive worlds. Um, yeah. But it's it 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 it's um it it takes into account it, uh, the existential as well. So so it changes. I mean, it can change. So you know, um, for instance, I mean, I'm I'm being a little bit um, uh, I, I don't mean to dumb this down, but you know, all of a sudden, if you've got a really bad toothache, <laughs> that in some ways becomes your ultimate concern, doesn't it? It suddenly well, yeah. it suddenly yeah, yeah. Uh, trumps <laughs> it, trump, trumps everything else, right? Yeah. But. Um, it's uh, it, so even a toothache, it, what I'm arguing, becomes a deeply spiritual thing. Actually, if if that's not alleviated somehow or other, then um, because you know, it'll color everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like just like some form of abuse will color Correct. everything. Correct. Yeah. Interesting. I think that's a good place for us to leave it today because I can see the time and we've run out. Yeah. Of um, but I'm so glad that we're going to be continuing this conversation two more times. We get two more bites of the cherry, which is yeah. fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Kim. I'm just going to um, talk about your workshop now. <laughs> um, Marnie, would you mind throwing up 
our events on the screen. Um, thank you everyone for being here today. I just want to um, tell you a little bit about what's coming up because if you've enjoyed today's conversation, you may very well like to come along to an online workshop that Kim is running twice next week, once on Tuesday and once on Thursday. And uh, Marnie's put the link in the chat for the page that she's showing you now, but this is the page on our website that's got all of our upcoming um, events. And that includes the workshops, but also part two and three of how we are changed. This is the conversation series that we've just kicked off. So you can see there, the next one is on the 11th of April and then also on the 9th of May. So you can, if you haven't already uh, registered for those, please do that now. Um, but also have a look at the workshops that are coming up next week. As I said, um, Kim's running a workshop on grief, loss and trauma based on um, his very uh, rich lived experience and perspectives. And um, also we have an introduction to Connect2 next week. So if Connect2 is of interest to you and you'd like to know more about this really fantastic tool, helpful framework, just way of looking at the world, um, then that could be something that you'd like to go along to as well. So please pop along to the events page um, on our website and you can see all of that information. Thank you again, Kim. It's been an absolute pleasure and we will see you next month in April, 11th of April, to do it again. Mm, indeed. And thank you. Um, thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you, Marnie, and thank you to everyone. I could see um, quite a few different um, people's thank yous coming up uh, there. So sorry, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't been able to keep up with it very well, but um, it's 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 been an absolute privilege. Um, thank you so much.